Hi there, welcome back to Rob's Models and apologies for the massive delay in doing this. Before we do the mask, I'm just gonna talk about the different paint that we're gonna be using. We're using, of course, the um, ICM Ghost of Kiev set. And of course, you get the instructions for the kit, tells you, but of course it's with decals. So what I've got is the Foxbot uh, masks, which we'll come onto properly in a minute. And of course, this has got a painting guide. What I uh, realized, which I didn't realize at first because I've been coming up with things, is uh, there's actually well, basically five different shades of gray going in on this. First of all, I've come up with a bit of a, a list. Uh, done this, so pleased with what I did. It was a couple of scribbles, a couple of attempts, ended up typing it up, uh, realized that was wrong. So did it again on the back, then realized that was wrong it again so what i've been trying to do is cross reference uh the different sources so the initial source was of course obviously the instructions which gives you the uh different uh layers uh then the foxbot instructions as well of course the foxbot instructions have got their own paint codes which don't relate to the icm so uh, in the end i ended up uh, going for this which actually now i've worked it out seems quite obvious uh main thing is going to be the underside which i've already painted is in d uh which is the foxbot code so i've actually gone through and i've marked it that's a german gray and uh, whereabouts is it d there we are that is the uh 1033 and what i've done on each of these i've actually uh, marked the, uh, the Foxbot code, so instead of trying to cross-reference it, um, and then what I'll do at a later date is put on the website the, uh, the breakdown as to what they are in Vallejo and the uh, FS numbers, those sort of things, or what they are in the kit. That's confused things, because of course the kit also uses um, the ABCD codes, but the Foxbot is at ABCs, but different ABCs, so um, had to rework that. But what I've done is on there, on these little masks, uh, if I come and try to bring in a little bit, it's going to just this, it's just trying to focus on white, just once we get it there. But hopefully you can just make out the, um, or as it well, tries to focus and it loses focus, the, the masks. But what I've done is I've just written A, B, D and E. Um, and because there's actually four different types of grey going on here. So, for example, if we were to look at this particular mask there, that's the entire mask, uh, which is also going to be a mask for the A, the B and the D, so all four different shades. So I don't think there's going to be a way, I haven't worked out a way I can logically layer them up. Uh, I think it is going to be a case of putting the whole lot on and then taking off one, spraying it, putting that back on then taking off another one and trying to do it in order. Uh, regarding the colours as well, we're starting with the lightest, the E, which is the top for the uh, the top. Um, the D is slightly darker, goes is the underside, and then you have the uh, B and the A, so it's almost like descending. Um, the darker sort of is the, yeah, goes down darkest. What I did find though, is flipping them up, the um, the two light colours were very, very similar, and the two darker colours were very, very similar. Uh, what I've actually done, and I know this is ICM, they're Ukrainian, this is a Ukrainian build, but I just kind of felt like that some of the digital camo was going to be getting lost, especially between the two lighter colours and the two darker colours, and effectively turn it two-tone. So, what I did, um, I've mixed uh, those together slightly. What I mean by that is I took... Uh, basically when you open these up they're, they're pretty much empty i've no, heard a few people say about the um, icm paints there's only like half a bottle so what i've done is i've put in a few drops of thinner because it needed thinner and i was trying to mix it each time so i just added x20a acrylic thinner tamia um use a little pipette and i've used about three pipettes worth in each of those just brings it up to just around about the shoulder of the bottle and gave it a good mix once i've got those mixed so they seem to be quite a good consistency now and ready to just go straight into the airbrush that one need to be dark and that one need to be lightened so i just sort of mix that one then took it out wipe the excess off and then use the same stirrer so as i was going between them just gently uh, that just made that one a little bit darker that one a little bit more lighter um wish me luck i've got a feeling that it could be a bit of a nightmare i finally managed to get the uh, ghost of kiev masked actually let's bring you in a bit tighter so you can see so um taking the mask sheet and what i've done is i basically put on all of the masks apart from the shade d and i'm using the fox bot reference because that's a paint scheme that i'm using so i know it's different to 
but basically that's the uh, sky gray d so i've marked it on there using my little crib sheet check out the website for more details on that but apart from d i put the masks on i know some people don't and for some of the things i've seen other people put the masks on where you just do little sections at a time i've masked the whole thing up purely because otherwise my um, airbrush is going to keep getting clogged up if I keep stopping, starting and doing changes. Plus this is also four different shades of grey going on here. I've got the initial grey down, uh, which is the light off white. That was the base coat, uh, but you've still got the A, B, hang on. A, B and D shades. The F is already down. That was all E, whichever one it was, um, down. So I'm um, ready to do. Um, so what I've done is I've put basically, I've masked the entire thing up apart from the D shades and also the uh, trident on the back. That's actually going to be um, in a the darker shade, but I've just left that unmasked for now. Uh, because I have adjusted slightly the tones of the grey, I have just given the bottom another little uh, light dusting of there. It's just actually knocked back some of the pre-shading, which once the paint had dried, the pre-shading come out a little bit too much. And because I have darkened this grey, so what I'm now going to do is to put on the uh, the D, which is the, what did we call it, was the sky grey, the 1033. So I'm going to be putting that on the bits that are not masked. Uh, this is where it's going to get confusing because then what I'll be doing is once that's dry, uh, this is the only way I've worked out I can do this, is to put the masks for the D back over covering what I've just painted and then work my way onto the next darkest shade which would be B and then going on to A which would be the darker shade. And it's the only way I can work out is to be taking masks off and putting masks on, either de them as much as possible. But I think for now the best thing is just going to be to spray these on so anywhere there's a gap I know that's going to be uh, up for painting. whereabouts the D was so essentially what I now need to do is to I've already got one on the end of a knife is to put I uh, basically mask up whereabouts I've painted so this will be putting color code D on so it's masking that then it's going to be a case of um, taking off the next color down which is the next darker one which is the paint code B we'll sort that out when we get to it but this is just going to be so and fiddly so it's just a case of hopefully you can see this okay putting this in there uh, this probably isn't going to be perfect and i'm going to end up with a few actually saying that that actually because i've tried to put them on in a jigsaw sort of way it, i say it's not going to be perfect but uh, there's so many little notches to the digital camo uh, that actually slid on quite well once i found it so we'll pop the one that was on there. So this was going to be gone up down there. That was going to be number nine. Number nine is that one up there. So there we go, found it. So I've marked it as D so I know where else it is. So I'm going to slide this off. Now some of these have come off already, but what I have been doing is just popping it on there giving it a little bit of a rub just to detect it because I have found this is quite sticky I don't want to go and put this on and uh, take it off again so you can see there's this little piece here you can just slot that into place and I literally do mean slot it that again hopefully that's just catching it there we go so what we'll now 
do is I'll go around and put the rest of these Ds on. And then once these Ds are on, we can go off and take these beads off. Uh, no point you watching that because this is going to be quite slow and tedious. Right, got the um, masks on for D, which actually stand out quite a bit more because they're the clean ones that have been taken off, where obviously that gray was going in. Oh, by the way, um, I have left the mask off of this one for now. That's actually gonna be the darkest of colors. So if we get a bit of overspray in that for the time being, that's okay, because that's actually gonna be the last one to go on, which would be the darker one, just in case you're worried about why the Trident hasn't got the um, mask on at the moment. But you can see, those, um, I've got to say, it was actually easier, doesn't mean it was easy, but it was easier than I thought, purely because there's so many notches and because I've spent so long getting them on there, actually with the tweezers, I could kind of get that one, for example, and pop it into place. And what would happen is it would kind of just sort of grip and then slowly get it down. Um, some of them, just because of the compound curves, I did actually chop in half just to make sure, for example, that one, there was it just didn't quite line up properly, obviously, with so many different masks coming on um, yeah but it's only little gaps and more just being careful for the sake of being careful uh, some of the ones which are just to go on this little bit where the tail plane actually starts I haven't bothered using just because actually using a bit of Tamiya tape because those are square anyway was actually a bit easier they were just so small and fiddly so now what I do is to find the next one which is going to be the next color down which is B which is the dark gray uh, I've marked it as B and that's the 1037. So now I've got to go around, find where I've got all the Bs, take them off and then put them back on this sheet, cross referencing it with the instructions so I know how to find them again. And it really is like taking a jigsaw puzzle, taking bits out of the jigsaw puzzle, putting them back in the box and putting them back in again. But actually so far, I'm quite pleased with how this is progressing. So let's start taking one off. So this is quite a simple one, up he says. So let's just get a scalpel blade under. And then just gently take that bit of mask off. And then put that essentially just kind of putting it roughly whereabouts it sort of would have been just so it's easier to find uh, actually let's come to the wing that'll be better now the wing uh, don't just think that one wing is all just one panel they're made up of lots of little panels which makes it confusing just this uh, this right wing port side wing has actually got one two three four different masks on um, which then all have to line up so uh, we'll start on the tip there's 17 17 is come from this space here. Some of these are some very bizarre shapes which you've kind of got to follow around. So there we go. We've got that taken off. And where do we say that was going to go? That was going to go in this section about there. It doesn't have to be precise, just so I know when I come back to it, I can find it easy. It's quite a few of those. So as before, what I'll do is I'll stop this, uh, stop the camera now and just carry on taking these off. And so we're ready to then get the uh, spray on. Okay, so I had a few issues here, not only with the airbrush and the paint, but also with the audio. So I'm just having to uh, add this on afterwards. Uh, basically, I uh, was so busy concentrating on setting up the mask and the airbrushes and stuff, I didn't actually uh, bother to turn the microphone on. But as I say, I'm going around just uh, spraying on that darker shade. Did have a few problems with it. Um, turns out it was actually mainly just the uh, 
paint drying on the airbrush needle so once I took the paint off the needle it was fine. Uh, it did respond quite well to the Tamiya uh, thinners, the acrylic thinners there, probably could have done with a little bit more but I did actually have to go through and build the layers up working my way around and then it actually did come out through uh, yeah, quite dark and then it's just a case of popping the, uh, once it's dry, popping the, the mask back on taking the next darker shade off and then doing that working through the uh, the three because of course I've already got the, the fourth one the, the base colour was already on so it's just working the way through there was a few issues with colours not sort of um you know the mask a little bit of bleeding through here and there but nothing that's uh, actually couldn't be touched up quite easily just with a fine brush using a little bit of paint just uh, in the lid of the uh, paint pot Uh, the main issue, which uh, was actually quite easy to neaten, was between some of the darker bits, some of the masking uh, hadn't quite uh, butted up completely, or there were little gaps, so there's a few little bits just to tidy. I've got to say, actually, it is a little bit more obvious now, the differences between... Well, actually, um, uh, I can, to the eye, not too sure how well it's shown on camera there, but between the, the two shades of the dark grey, not completely obvious, but um, when you look at it, you can see that sort of change. Uh, so next thing now I've touched that up is to do a little bit of masking so we've got the little anti-glare bit we need to do got the uh, nose cone and a few other bits which is going to be the grey that we've not used yet the dark sea grey the 1034 so just going to be a few bits here and there a few little areas to mask up little, there's a few bits that are not perfect on here but I think with a little bit of weathering uh, it will just help it blend, especially once we get a matte coat over it. It should just um, start bringing it all together. 